Abe Norman presents Bird Walking. You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast, only this show is not about birds. Bird walking is when a conversation flows easily from one topic to another, and your hosts, Natalie and Brandon, discuss topics ranging from Seattle, everyday life, current events, and many more. So let's begin. Bird walking. Hi there, this is Natalie. And this is Brandon. And today we're going to talk about the Seattle Freeze. The Seattle Freeze, if you're not familiar with it, is this notion that people who live in Seattle are basically cold to newcomers and don't really reach out to them. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we think about that. So I know that we always say that the Seattle Freeze is a thing, but from everything I've read from people who moved to big cities, it's not a Seattle only thing. Actually, I, I, I totally agree with you, but I kind of talked to a couple people this week and the prevailing opinion of at least one of my friends is that it actually is real. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, how so? Well, so so my my theory has always been it's not it's not real at all. Um, you know, it, it, actually, what it is, I always feel like. So you're riding the bus, you're on the on the light rail or whatever. Is that we just firmly believe got to get up in other people's business? I don't. I so and at the at the um, so at the risk of become or coming across as cold as unfriendly but i'm not going to risk assuming anything about you so i'm not even going to engage so i'm not going to assume that that purple sweater you're wearing is something you want to talk about even though i'm wearing the exact same <laughs> sweater and we probably got it you know in in utah or something you know so if, if that is actually the mindset of the average seattleite which i'm not totally sure it is but if it is that is why i like it so much here right because i definitely operate that way and i would rather people mind their own business and that's kind of a particularly at work that's a really strong thing of even now it's kind of gauche to even comment on someone's weight loss and all of that kind well, of stuff. Well, you never know what's going on, right? Right, like, right. Like, oh, thanks, I have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I will use that one day to shut someone up, but I, I also believe in karma in that way, so maybe not. Um, so I think, I think that it starts off kind of jumping around a little bit, but I, I feel like what people okay first of all let me let me say this i have always thought the seattle freeze means people are like oh hey you're new that's great we should hang out sometime and they never follow up oh see is that, am, I've, I may always, be wrong. I've always understood it as they don't even talk to you in the first place they just assume so you're um you just moved into the block or you moved into the, the building and they see you in the hallway they've never seen you before but no one says hey are you new to the building my name is Brandon. Oh, which, by the way, um, this is Brandon Scalf. And Natalie. Um, and we are kind of just trying out this new uh, podcast to sort of talk about the things that just interest us. And we, we hope that they interest you as well. So try to keep up. Um, <laughs> anyway, so like, and that's my thing is like, they're very, very, everyone's just in their own little clique in their own community. And they're not even going to bother reaching out to you, even they, even if they know for a fact that you're new. That that's I, that my I, understanding. So if that's the case, and I say that it's definitely not just us. Um, I, yeah, I have so many. I have so many thoughts on this. Like, if it is just Seattle, that's actually part of the draw for a lot of people um, to move here because we have so many transplants. But like, New York's known for that too, right? The whole they'll just step over you instead of helping. Except yeah, but on, well, true, so we can, but... yeah, so then that's all another topic: East Coast versus West Coast, and, and <laughs> that and is fair kind yeah. of attitudes. But I, and I think we should come back to that, but. Um, it's a matter of well, and so and the other question is: Is it just Seattle, or is it is it big city versus small town? Right. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a really, really important thing. But so, and I like I said, I talked to a couple people this week, and one immediately was like, "Oh my God, it's totally real. Are you kidding me? I've been here for eight years, and this town is the most clickish, closed off, no one follows up, like you said, um, town, and you have to fight tooth and nail to to break yourself into a social group." And I was like, well, I'm surprised at that. And he's like, yes, but don't get me wrong. It suits me and it suits my personality. And I I dig it. Okay. <laughs> and that's, that's a great link to another thought I had about it when we talked about it a while ago is I feel like the Seattle Freeze puts it on the people who are already here versus people who just moved here. 
You know what I mean? That's like, good point. I don't move to a new place and assume people are just going to open the door for me. I think in some communities, smaller towns, the South, I think other parts of the world, they absolutely do that. But in the U.S., we're not. We put it more on the other on on them, right? Um, a friend of ours years ago moved here, um, and he actively would invite me over a lot to just hang out, um, and that was on him because he's weird like weird anyway. Why would you go to somebody's house? <laughs> drive <laughs> um now as we're sitting here talking about it because i gave you a look when he's like it's been eight years and it's hard to get clickish and i'm like what clicks are you talking about um and like, okay so where do all my friends come from um the band the band 12th night yeah community work. groups right yeah. it's community groups but see this i but your to your point i it never occurred to me that really it's at least 50-50 onus on the new person, too. And all the dialogue around the Seattle freeze is about how cold the people who live here are. And you're abs- it never, honestly never occurred to me, what are you doing? Yeah, to- you have to do your thing, too. Right. You're the new person. You have to, we yeah. have our own lives already. We're in relationships. We have our own schedule and so forth. So you got to... And it's hard enough to say no to all your current friends, let alone say no to new friends. Right, seriously, it's, it's a thing, right? You know, I was recently hanging out with someone I used to work with, and she was great about following up. When are we going to do this? Okay, let's do it on Saturday. I'll coordinate with the other person. Like, she was on it. Because I think it would have been another six months otherwise. And we know each other. Right. You know? Right. So, and, and that is... That is Seattle. I will say that. That we're very much like, leave the house. Like you just said, go to someone's house. What? Like, do you want to go to the bar? Yes. But maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but even then, I just, uh, how many, how many times is, it's, it's, um, it's Sunday night and you're texting your friend and they're like, dude, yeah, let's hang out. That'd be awesome. Wednesday night. That's great. I'm totally open with saying awesome. And then all day long on Wednesday, you're like, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I hope they cancel. I, I hope they cancel. <laughs> I oh my God. I do, I, I do not want to do this. Are you kidding me? And then you're like, and it's like four o'clock and you're like, ah. like cause you need to, somebody needs to break the silence and do something. So finally you're like, are we hanging tonight? This I mean, one hundred percent. And then you true. automatically give them an out too. You're like, are we are we doing something tonight? I mean, it's okay if you're busy, yeah. or we we can do Saturday if you want. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm sure everyone does the same thing. Um, but so, and this is all sort of part of the same topic. But one of my biggest complaints, and I don't know if this is the Seattle freeze or if it's just adulthood or what have you, is that is the the the, the disappointing lack of follow up like across the board i feel um like a, a simple example is this is totally selfish but i feel like 99 percent of the time um aside from like three of my best friends i'm always the first one to text somebody proactively if i haven't heard from them in a while i feel like it's extremely rare that i just get out of the blue texts from my sort of wider circle of friends and that seems minor and selfish but sometimes you're like what the hell? No, I agree. And I, I will say that I'm absolutely guilty of that. Um, actually, not with you as much, um, but with other people, for sure, that I, that, that, uh, that you, re- you react more than... So what's going on there? Well, one, I, as much as I actually like writing, I don't, that's not my favorite way to communicate with people, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Texting? Like, Yeah. Um, I'd rather talk than write it out, especially you know that one friend what, of him we who's like, to like talk? I know, what? right? <laughs> <laughs> um, we, you know, you and I have the common friend who is will just send you thirty messages, not exaggerating, um, and I before you even th- get a chance to respond, and I, and here's I always me. just assume he's like totally high when he's doing that, so I, I don't really like think it's weird. I'm just like, it's, it's possible. How I mean, high are you right it now? Is, it is that's the <laughs> reputation of Seattle, right? Um, for sure, or, but. Yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, and then, but then here's me. Oh, good. <laughs> That's my response. I'm like, I'm terrible. Sometimes, every once in a while, you'll get a whole thing from me, but it's just not my biggest thing. I also, like, once I'm home, I'm kind of like, well, now I'm home. <laughs> and I don't really want to talk to anybody else. Or... See, and I guess I'm the opposite where I feel like text messaging is like a godsend because it allows you to kind of have these long conversations that are like unbound in time yes i do agree with and that you can stay in touch with your friends over a period of days you know and it doesn't have you're sort of it doesn't have to be 
Uh, yeah, like an appointment thing where you, and then you have the thing and then you're gone. And I do like, te- don't misunderstand me, I like texting. I'm just, it's, um, I, yeah, I, I'm much more comfortable with uh... bird walking. You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast. That's okay. It's like, it's like the, the biggest faux pas our producer didn't even manage to turn his phone off. It's awesome. I'm like, I, I think that's our musical cue. Oh, no, 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 I know. I was like, oh, wait, we're, or are we, are we getting close like, already? Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Good idea to turn it down. <laughs> we, just, we just got started. So now that we have you, um, what, what is the Seattle Freeze real? Yes, I've heard it so many times uh, with from, from people from all over, uh, from friends from New York. My ex-wife is from New York, talked about that too, how people, I hear it so much, how people are very friendly, very cold, don't come over and say hello or, you know, so I didn't know what the Seattle freeze was when you first started talking about it. Oh, uh, no, that's yeah, fair. And, and then, and then I, <laughs> it is cold out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't even get that cold. Are yeah. You, like, what are you, <laughs> But I actually, I did pull up some information uh, just so I could be a little bit more familiar with what the Seattle Freeze is. And anyway, I, I thought I'd drop this in there. Um, it's actually Wikipedia, and it, there's this, just this little little paragraph here. It says um, it has been speculated that the origin of the phenomenon could stem from the reserved personalities of the city's Nordic and Asian immigrants. Yeah, I've heard that yeah, before. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, but, yeah. But we don't. We're not that anymore. We're no. not even close well, to but, that. Okay. Like, so my own personal thing is um, why I moved here is not because of that, but why I have, you know, like I said, that's one of the reasons why I like Seattle, but it, it really is because I am not your traditional girly girl, you know, coming from St. Louis where people definitely look at you when you don't do anything with your hair you just let it grow naturally right. or you don't wear a lot of makeup or none at this point obviously right and and i just i also think our about, listeners right now are like wow what the hell <laughs> well <laughs> but, but not necessarily if they live in if they live in seattle not really because the number she of, looks fine by the way yeah 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 the number of women that i work with who do not wear makeup is i'm sure way higher than it is in other parts of the country i know that it's becoming more common or it's very very natural yeah. Or I have a colleague that wears a lot of makeup, but she's she's very open about like she loves to play with it stuff. It. She yeah. has she has four or five different looks that she comes in with, the, you know. And I I'm actually honestly never sure if I'm supposed to say something. I know because yeah, it's we're not like... supposed to talk about that. But, it, but she's literally. I mean, it's no different for her, like shoes or something. She's like, yeah, try it on a new, new look, and I I'm sure she'd be like, oh, I totally noticed. Like, hey, I love the what you're doing today, and like she'd be like, oh my god, I did my eyes different. <laughs> Right. Yeah, which is, and that's, yeah, that seems so unbelievable. As a hobby, that's cool. Challenging, yeah, like, um, so, yeah, the mere fact that you can, to a very large extent, be who you want to be here, um, I think is a huge draw for people. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree, I, you know, or in being gay, I'm allowed to kind of be what I want, but it's hard to kind of look back 20 years ago and sort of see that difference. And, and you and I both came from, uh, it's, like I said, over 20 years ago now, but we from the St. Louis area. And there is a whole different kind of um, standard so that people expect judgy. you to be. And it's super <laughs> judgy. And then they're also very in your, they will ask you questions in the, in the grocery store line and they'll kind of talk to you and stuff. And it's really easy to feel a little persecuted is too strong a word but a little bit a little a little called out for lack of a yeah or a little um wary of sharing too much so you right so you can kind of just do small talk but then small talk is the worst yeah i don't because there are there are are plenty of times at work where i'm like but that is none of my business i have to say this to myself to remind myself that it is in fact not my problem right um, and I just feel like there's probably far fewer people in the Midwest saying that to themselves. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, even yeah. asking, like, or yeah, taking like, a second to be like, maybe I shouldn't ask her about her hair. You know, maybe I don't need to. Yeah. And, you know, I think that we can go a little too far with that. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. There's a there's a balance there for sure. Right. Well, see, because we talked about this before where we're kind of right in the middle of the um, super sensitive, triggered in society right now or culture right now where we might be correcting too much on the other end where we we're afraid to say anything to anyone at all because you might 
you, you're assuming too much, like we said, or you might trigger them, or you might you don't know what they're going through and stuff. Versus, um, and that might be true, but the chances of you kind of picking that one topic that's just super taboo for them and making them cry is pro- is really really slim, and more likely Maybe. they just want to talk about Orange Is the New Black with you in the Orville or something, right? Yes. What? I was watching that this morning. You said that earlier. Oh, good. Okay, here. I didn't know. I, for- I, I forgot. So I was like, God, I was bringing up a topical reference for your benefit. And I look at you like you're insane. Okay. okay no, I looked at you like you're a wizard because that's what I thought was happening. Are you a wizard? A wizard of wise. You must be the wizard. The wizard of Oz. <laughs> so, um,. Uh, so this is a, a little bit off topic, but a little bit related to what we were just talking I think about. That's going to be like the name of our show. <laughs> little, this is a little bit <laughs> it's off topic. A little off topic, but <laughs> okay, wait, what was he talking about? Yeah, um, I was listening to another podcast, uh, Hannah and Matt, the other day, and they were talking about how long do you persecute someone for something they said. Oh, uh, so that's in the past. current right now with the Virginia governor, right? Um, um, yeah. And there's I, other examples recently. And I read but... the, yeah, I read that thing afterwards. And I know that it's tough, but it is kind of, he's, he's like, look at all these other things I've done since. Right. And it's... It, it, and it's, that's it's, a tricky it's, thing. And we no, I agree. A whole other yeah. thing. But on its surface, that is a very, that it's a very true thing. Like, what do we do? Like, okay, are you not allowed to ever make any mistakes ever? Right. They brought up MLK. Right. Um... So when we were growing up, what I heard all the time about him from somebody was that he was a philanderer. Right. Which is true. But they were all philanderers. Right. And he um, also apparently was um, also sign of the times for sure, uh, wrote a lot of homophobic stuff as well. But I think most people would agree that everything else he did outweighed so, that. That's an excellent example. But so if he were alive and he was in office right now oh that would destroy him politically expedient wouldn't we pull that out and and say you can no longer serve as our representative yeah for the black community because times change and that's i think that's a really i mean on yes i i will say that i do acknowledge that i also have i do have a little hard time with it because i've never done those things yeah but so in the case so again this so in the case of the um of the governor and I think probably in the long run he's in trouble. But it, you know, like why was that picture even put, like so? For reference, there's a picture of a, a person in blackface and a KKK member. But why was that even published in the yearbook at all? That is, if it was so terrible. And it wasn't because that at the long time, ago. It was kind of funny. <laughs> And I remember in high school, it would be funny, even though we knew it was wrong. Like, it was okay to laugh at that stuff, even though we knew it was totally wrong. Well, it was for us, because we're white, but it wasn't... <laughs> no, and I, no, it's, times have changed. It's like, yeah. now we're woke, right? But it's, 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 it is important to put things in context, you know. And obviously, his response has been such that you're like, hmm, I think there's stuff going on there. But I, Part of me was, I kind of liked his response, where he's like, this is a non-issue. I know, but he also said, yeah, but, okay, that wasn't me in the picture, but I did do blackface for a Michael Jackson dance contest. <laughs> it sounds hideous. That's, no, I'm my only thing. Like, there's a taste level going I know, but on that's here, super okay? stupid, but guaranteed, if we went to a dance in 1986... Yes, it's true. ...and there were people with brown on their faces and stuff to do a Michael Jackson contest, we would have thought it was hilarious. And not even racist hilarious, but just like, yeah. he's he's acing it. This is, this is excellent. So, yeah, it's in fair. context, right? Yeah. Okay, so... We're about ready to wrap up here. Um, I don't know if we have to do a conclusion or come back around <laughs> on the topic, but um, I, I feel like the Seattle freeze is real, but it's okay. Right. And But I really, really like your notion that you also got to do some work, too. Yeah. And I have to remember that because, you know, I've had pity parties where I'm like, oh, no one invites me to anything. <laughs> well, so what I've learned in the last couple of years is, is that um, when you keep saying no to things, eventually people stop inviting you. <laughs> it's really, it is, it's, it's so strange. And it's super depressing. You're like, no, you, I still want you to ask me to come to the party. I just, I won't come, but like, I want to be invited. <laughs> so I had someone recently who they've just been super busy. So she's like, I can't, but please keep asking me that I, I right. will have time, you know, in another month or what have you. Right. But then even that fault, eventually you're like, you call me, right? Yes. I wonder how much of the Seattle freeze has something to do with the, the 
the big tech boom. You got a, a lot of the tech people being sort of, um, you know, very into the yes. technology and computers are not super social. Um, I think somebody mentioned that to me. One of my one of my friends was saying that uh, that was maybe the reason why people were a little more. Uh, yeah, I would say I. A little less. I, I think if anything, like if maybe more. if you had a choice of going to say Virginia or Seattle and you felt you yeah you spent most of your time online talking to people and you maybe feel a little socially yeah, awkward mm-hmm. Seattle's probably going to be the one that you right. pick just based on reputation alone yeah I definitely would but, but then that goes back to I, I also maintain that just being a big city you ha- you have to put walls up you also can't assume anything and get in people's faces everyone because we're all packed in together you have to kind of keep your distance for people in a big city in a smaller town you can get away with it yeah more because you have more space and stuff so bird walking